I'm Vandy Toombs. I'm an applied mathematician at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, and today I'll be discussing applying differentiable programming to the dark channel prior. So what is differentiable programming? The goal is to combine machine learning with validated algorithms and physical models. The hope is that there will be more interpretability in machine learning algorithms and that they'll be more trusted. Hopefully, using a physical model as a guide, we'll be able to require less data to train these parameters compared to a typical machine learning model. And so how do we do differentiable programming? We'll use zygote to apply gradient-based optimization to these algorithms by parameterizing the model, defining a loss function, and gathering data for training. In our case, we will do this with the dark channel prior in order to improve a dehazing algorithm. So how do we model haze? Well, looking at the picture on the right, we see that there are particles in between the camera and the object that cause the light to scatter. This scattering causes the image to look hazy. Now moving to the equation, we see that in order to recover the clear image from the hazy image, we need to estimate two things, atmospheric light, which is shown by A, and the transmission map, which is T of X. The transmission map represents the scattering that these particles are causing. The dark channel prior is a method developed by He et al. that estimates the atmospheric light in the transmission map. It does this by noticing that clear images have at least one color channel with pixel intensity close to zero within an image patch. They define the dark channel as shown in this first equation here. This is used to estimate the transmission map, but because this is not smooth, the transmission map may cause the final image to have artifacts. Thus, it becomes necessary to refine the transmission map before using it in the Hayes equation. Atmospheric light is estimated by taking the top 0.1% of the brightest pixels in the dark channel and choosing the pixel with the highest intensity in the regular image to be atmospheric light. These are then used in the Hayes equation from the previous slide. What we would like to do is to apply differentiable programming to this method in order to improve the result. We use Zygote, a Julia package for automatic differentiation to do this. So we begin by implementing the dark channel prior method in Julia. Overall, we didn't really need to be aware that we were going to apply differentiable programming to the algorithm. We only needed to know that with Zygote, learnable parameters must be inputs to functions. So as you can see here, our dehaze function has quite a few inputs and the zygote does not easily differentiate functions that mutate arrays. You either need to not differentiate those functions or use a buffer. But in general, we could just develop it as usual and then apply differentiable programming later. So to begin applying differentiable programming to our dehaze method, we needed to parameterize it. We began by parameterizing the dark channel construction. We do this in two ways. First, by allowing the dark channel to either use a min filter, a mean filter, or a combination of both by introducing a parameter theta. We then also allowed the entire dark channel function to be replaced with a small convolutional neural network. In our Julia implementation, we defined a new type for each new parameter and an abstract type for the parameter family. So in this case, we have two types, one that wraps the theta, learning to either use a min filter, a mean filter, or a combination of both, and the other that wraps the convolutional neural network model. And we introduce an abstract type dark channel to represent this parameterization family. So for those who are familiar with flux, using Julia's types to wrap learnable parameters might feel very familiar. Others, it might seem unnecessary and maybe borderline abusive, but there were a few reasons why we wanted to do this. First, updating and applying the gradient to each of these parameter types is going to be different. Obviously, updating a convolutional neural network is going to be different than updating a single floating point parameter. And in some cases, the parameter might be a function that we want to define custom gradients on. Obviously, we could do this in Zygo without defining a function, without defining a type and just using a function, but we lose the previous benefit. And as I'll discuss later, this also simplified the implementation of the hyperparameter optimization method we chose to use. So then we also parameterize the transmission map construction. We introduced additive and multiplicative parameters, and we parameterized a few common filters that are used to refine the transmission map. We also allowed the possibility of using a small convolutional neural network to refine the transmission map. So some of these parameters cannot be used at the same time. 
For example, we can either use a convolutional neural network parameterization of the construction of the dark channel prior or theta, but we can't use both. Thus, we, needed, we used a generalization of sequential forward selection in order to choose which parameter to use. We begin with a base initialization for each parameter. And then for each parameter in a family, we randomly initialize the parameter and train using the other parameters as defined in the base initialization. Then we choose the best one to be our new base initialization. Anything in the family with the chosen initialization isn't going to be used again. Julia's dispatching of types made this quite a bit easier to implement than it would be in other languages and likely contributed to the quick training time. So now quickly to show how differentiable programming was able to improve the dark channel prior implementation for the Hayes imagery. This slide shows the results of applying the original dark channel prior method as described by he et al, with the exception of refining the transmission map. As you can see, the dehazed result looks pretty bad and shows the need for refining the transmission map when using the original method. We used these parameters as our base initialization in sequential forward selection. And then after training, we were able to see that the image does look dehazed. It's interesting to note that the learned dark channel construction no longer requires the transmission map to be refined. In conclusion, differentiable programming in Julia was pretty easy to do. We were able to implement the dark channel prior without too much concern about how Psygo or other differentiable programming would be used. It was simple to apply differentiable programming to our implementation, and parallelization in Julia improved the training time. A few of the difficulties were that we were, Zygo does not easily work with mutating arrays, and that learned parameters needed to be inputs to the functions being differentiated. But overall, I would recommend using differentiable programming in Julia and would definitely do it again. So thank you for listening.